Hare Krishna, dear devotees, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada, all glories to our Guru Dev. Thank you very much for joining His Holiness Chandamali Swami Maharaj's daily call. Unfortunately, Maharaj is not able to be here because of his travel schedule. So therefore, I'm humbly undertaking this service of giving class as requested by uh, Srimati. I have chosen this particular canto and this particular chapter and this verse because it is so dear to Lord Chaitanya, Prahlad Maharaj pastimes. So give me one second while I pull that up on the screen. Hare Krishna Mataji. Um, Mataji, we are not able to see you even though your camera is on. Uh, it's very um, totally black. Um, you're not able to see you. Okay, we're trying to fix that. Just give me a minute and I'll fix that. for your patience with this. I have chosen this particular chapter uh, on Prahlad Maharaj. And this chapter in particular is when Prahlad Maharaj is instructing his demoniac schoolmates. So it's very interesting. And I will simply read out the translations of verse 1, 2, and 3. And then we will zoom in to verse 1. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Narayanam Namaskritya Naram Chaiva Narottamam Devim Saraswatim Vyasam Tatojaya Mudirayet Nashta Prayashwa Bhadreshu Nityam Bhagavata Sevaya Bhagavati Uttamash Loke Bhakti Bhavati Naishtiki uh, For my humble obeisance to all the assembled Vaishnavas humbly begging for your blessings, for your mercy, so that by your mercy, I will be able to do justice to the service that has been given to me. I offer my humble obeisances to all of you. Vancha, Kalpata, Rubyascha, Kripa, Sindhubya, Evacha, Matita, Nam, Pavanibyo, Vaishnavibyo, Namo, Namaha. I offer my humble obeisances to my dear Gurudev. Nama Om Vishnu Padaya, Krishna Prishtaya, Bhutale, Shri Mate, Chandamadi, Swami, Niti, Namini, Nama Om Vishnu Padaya, Krishna Prishtaya, Bhutale, Shri Mate, Bhakti, Vedanta, Swami, Niti, Namini, Namaste, Saraswate, Deve, Gauravani, Pracharine, Nubhi, Sesha, Shunya, Vadika, Shikya, Desha, Tarine, Nama Om Vishnu Padaya, Krishna Prishtaya, Bhutale, Shri Mate, Bhakti, Vedanta, Swami, Niti, Namini, Namaste, Saraswate Deve, Gaudavani, Pracharine, Nirvi Sesha, Shrinivadi, Pashitya Desha Tarini, Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya, Prabhu Nityananda, Shri Advaita Gadadar, Shivasadi, Gaur Bhakta Vrinda, 
हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 रामा हरे रामा राम रामा हरे हरे हरि नाम संकीर्तन की जय सो आई हैव जीरो डे इन ऑन दिस पर्टिकुलर वर्स व्हिच आई विल रीड आउट श्री प्रहराद उवाचा कौमाराचर प्रज्ञो धर्मान भागवता निहा दुर्लभ मानुषम जन्म तदप्य ध्रुवम अर्थदम ट्रांसलेशन प्रहलाद महाराज सेड वन हु इज सफिशिएंटली इंटेलिजेंट should use the human form of body from the very beginning of life in other words from the tender age of childhood to practice the activities of devotional service giving up all other engagements the human body is most rarely achieved and although temporary like other bodies it is meaningful because in human life one can perform devotional service even a slight amount of sincere devotional service can give one complete perfection jai hari bol was number 2 yatahi purushasya ha vishnu pado pasarpanam ya desha sarva bhutanam priya atma ishvara suri <coughs> translation the human form of life affords one a chance to return home back to godhead therefore every living entity especially in the human form of life must engage in devotional service to the lotus feet of lord vishnu this devotional service is natural because lord vishnu the supreme personality of godhead is the most beloved the master of the soul and the well wisher of all other living beings and then we go to verse number 3 and then we will zoom in to verse what verse number 3 सुखम ऐन्द्रियकम दैत्या देहयोगे न देहिनाम सर्वत्र सर्वत्र लभ्यते दैवाद यथा दुखम अयत्नतः लाल महाराज कंटिन्यू माय डियर फ्रेंड्स बोर्न ऑफ डेमोनियक फैमिलीज द हैप्पीनेस परसीव्ड विद रेफरेंस टू द सेंस ऑब्जेक्ट बाय कांटेक्ट विद द बॉडी कैन बी ऑब्टेन इन एनी फॉर्म ऑफ लाइफ अकॉर्डिंग टू वन्स पास्ट क्रिएटिव एक्टिविटी such happiness is automatically obtained without endeavor just as we obtain the stress see the wisdom of little prahlad even at such a tender age of 5 years he has perfected the human form of life and become pure devotee from the womb itself of kayadu hmm? therefore even at the age of 5 years he is preaching to his demoniac classmate just see and lord chaitanya used to be so happy to hear these past times he would ask gadadhar to read these past times again and again and again and gadadhar prabhu would read them again and then again and again even up to 100 times and then again lord chaitanya would say read it again <laughs> so prahlad maharaj is mahajan hmm one of the 12 mahajans who are the 12 mahajans swayambhu narada shambhu uh, kumara kapila manu Pralada Janaka Bhishma Balir Vaya Sakhi Vayam. These are the twelve Mahajan, and of them Pralad Maharaj is considered because he is so small at the age of five years. He is completely pure and why not even five years from the womb he had attained perfection. So he was born pure devotee, having attained complete perfection by simply hearing the words of his spiritual master Narad Muni in the womb. So let's look at verse number one. Hmm? Here, Pralad Maharaj is preaching to his classmates. Translation again: Pralad Maharaj said, "One who is sufficiently intelligent should use the human form of body from the very beginning of life. In other words, from the tender age of childhood, to practically, to, I'm sorry, to practice the activities of devotional service, giving up all other engagements. The human body is most rarely achieved." and although temporary like other bodies it is meaningful because in human life one can perform devotional service even a slight amount of sincere devotional service can give one complete perfection purpose the whole purpose of vedic civilization and of reading the vedas is to attain the perfect stage of devotional service in the human form of life according to the vedic system therefore from the very beginning of life the brahmacharya system is introduced 
so that from one's very childhood from the age of 5 years one can practice modifying one's human activities so as to engage perfectly in devotional service as confirmed in the bhagavad gita swalpam apyasya dharmasya trayate mayato mahato bhaya even a little advancement on this path can protect one from the most dangerous type of fear modern civilization not referring to the verdicts of vedic literature is so cruel to the members of human society that instead of teaching children to become brahmacharis it teaches mothers to kill their children even in the womb on the plea of curbing the increase of population and if by chance a child is saved he is educated only for sense gratification gradually throughout the entire world human society is losing interest in the perfection of life indeed men are living like cats and dogs spoiling the duration of their human life by actually preparing to transmigrate again to the degraded species among the 8 million 400000 forms of life the krishna consciousness movement is anxious to serve human society by teaching people to perform devotional service which can save a human being from being degraded again to animal life as already stated by prahlad maharaj bhagavad dharma consists of shravanam kirtanam vishnu smaranam pada sevanam archanam vandanam dasyam sakyam atma nivedanam in all the schools colleges and universities and at home all children and youths should be taught to hear about the supreme personality of godhead in other words they should be taught to hear the instructions of bhagavad gita to put them into practice in their life and thus to become strong in devotional service free from fear of being degraded to animal life following bhagavad dharma has been made extremely easy in this age of kali the shastra says hare nama hare nama hare nama eva kevalam kalo nasteva 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 gatir anyatha one need only chant the hare krishna maha mantra everyone engaged in the practice of chanting the hare krishna maha mantra will be completely cleansed from the core of his heart and be saved from the cycle of birth and death om agyana timirandasya gnananjana shalakaya chakshur unmilitam yena tasmay shri guruve namaha shri chaitanya mano bhishtam sapitam yena bhutale swayam rupa khadamayam dadati svapadantikam jai shri krishna chaitanya prabhu nityananda shri advaita gadadhara shiva sadi gaur bhakta vrinda हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे सो देयर इज अ स्टोरी व्हिच आई वुड लाइक टू स्टार्ट बाय स्टार्ट द क्लास बाय रिलेटिंग द स्टोरी वंस अ म्यूजिक टीचर वाज अप्रोच्ड बाय अ मदर एंड हर लिटिल सन एंड she was very keen because he was an extremely talented extremely gifted very proficient music teacher who would hone child prodigies so that they became very good themselves he piano teacher so then now uh, this teacher was listening to the mother's plea please take my son please i want him to learn from you please help him to learn the piano nicely i know that you can bring out the best in him etc etc When the boy was about eight, nine years old, so the music teacher had asked, "How many years has he has he already been learning to play the piano?" He said, "Yes." Oh, I see. But the teaching was not so good. Mother said, "I want him to have you as a teacher." And how many years did he learn? Five years. Oh, we are already five years too late. <laughs> so the teacher was wanted to. explain that when you have to teach a child who has already learned something wrong it is much more difficult hmm you have to make them unlearn everything that they have learned wrong and then teach them the right thing which is what is happening in today's world because our children we ourselves until we came to krishna consciousness what did we know what did we learn sense gratification economic development that's all we knew isn't it at least speaking of myself and we had to unlearn all that and take up the process of devotional service but what if from the very beginning the right thing is taught what a difference it will make to the whole world what a difference it will make to the lives of the children hmm? which are being coming confused frustrated hippies 
as Srila Prabhupada called the frustrated youth of America, we will have knowledgeable, competent, Krishna conscious youth who will change the world. You just imagine what a beautiful day that will be. So here, Prahlad Maharaj is explaining that the whole purpose of human form of life, this rare human birth, is to get out of the clutches of the modes of material nature and be situated in the perfection of life, pure loving servitorship to Krishna. Hmm? Which one of us wants to not get out? We all want to get out of the entanglement of the material energy. And there's a way to do that. There's a process of doing that, of getting back to our original form, original position. And that is called this process of Krishna consciousness, purifying to the heart and the bringing us back to Krishna. So, right from the very beginning of life, if we are taught the principle of dharma, the principles of religion, how to love God, how to serve, serve God, how many things we can avoid, hmm? the reaction of sinful activities, the karma that comes with it, the unhappiness and the distress, we're causing not only to ourselves and to others through wrong, sinful deeds. All those things can be avoided simply by taking up the process of Krishna consciousness from the very beginning of life. So what does Prahlad Maharaj say? From the very childhood, one should practice Krishna consciousness so that all the human activities can be perfectly molded in devotional service. Even little advancement on this path can save us from the most dangerous type of fear. And what is the dangerous type of fear? Of gliding down into a lower species of life after attaining the human form of life. This is the saddest thing that can happen to a human being, isn't it? To lose the divine gift of the human form of life and to glide down into pigs and hogs and dogs and asses and camels, as Srila Prabhupada would say. This is the most degraded way to conduct one's life that we glide down and then our soul enters the animal species of life. So sad. You know, Srila Prabhupada once, he saw people, old people playing golf and he started crying saying, just see how they are wasting their human form of life. This is spiritual suicide. Don't waste your human form of life. Go back to Krishna. Hmm? So therefore, it is so important for Vedic literatures and scriptures to be understood, to be spread, to uplift humanity from the mass of ignorance that it has fallen into because the, the darkness of ignorance is like a dark black cloud hanging over the whole world. There are so few devotees, so few of us. Huh? But those of us who have become fortunate by the mercy of Prabhupada must now try our level best to make others fortunate. Hmm? Instead of teaching all the wrong, sinful things that are happening in the schools, colleges, universities, Bhagavad Gita, Srimad Bhagavatam, Chaitanya Charitamrita, Nectar of Devotion, Nectar of Instruction. This is what our children need to hear, understand and practice from the very beginning of life. Hmm? So instead of that, what is happening in the world today is actually gliding down towards hell. Srila Prabhupada says, Andha means blind. The blind leaders are pulling down everybody on the flat of blindness. And everyone is gliding down towards hell. So we should understand how valuable this human form of life is. We have come to this human form of life after passing through 8,400,000 species of life. Yes, Prabhupada said this. Our soul has entered into each and every species on the planet. Believe me. And grasshopper, elephant, fish, bird, fly reptile, snake, you name it. Every species of life we have gone through and now we have attained the human form of life. What a rare gift this is. What a rare opportunity this is to perfect this human form of life and go back to Krishna. So therefore, Srila Prabhupada goes on to say, this Krishna consciousness movement is anxious to serve the human society by teaching people what? to perform devotional service, to reawaken their original love for Krishna, which is dormant in the heart of every living entity. 
Every living entity has dormant love for Krishna, but it is heavily covered over. A tree, a fish, a dog, a camel, they also have, but it is covered over because their consciousness is very low. But in the human form of life, we can easily reawaken this dormant love that we have for Krishna by chanting, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. So such a beautiful process has been given to us by Lord Chaitanya, who understands how fallen we are, how degraded we are, how weak we are. We are not capable of heavy sacrifices and tapasyas and austerities. So he has made it very easy. Chant Hare Krishna and awaken your love for Krishna. Take Krishna Prashadam. Do a little service for Krishna and go back to Krishna. Nine processes of devotional service. Shravana hmm? Kirtana Swarana Vandana Pada Sevana Dasari Pujana Sakhi Jana Atmani Vedana Govinda Dasa Bhilasari Bhajya Hure Mana Shri Nanda Nandana Abhaya Jarana Ravindari So there's this beautiful bhajan. Hmm? Take the name of Krishna. Engage in the devotional service of Krishna. There are nine processes of devotional service beginning with Shravanam, Kirtanam, Vishnu, Smaranam, Pada Sevanam, Archanam, Vandanam, Dasyam, Sakyam, Atma Nivedanam. Giving everything, surrendering everything to Krishna. Of course, the last two are on a very high platform, spontaneous or Raganuga devotional service, it is called. So, Sakyam and Atma Nivedanam are on a very, very high, exalted level of bhakti. But here we are, small little creatures, at least we can begin in with. Shravanam and Kirtanam. Shravanam means hearing and Kirtanam means chanting the glories of the Lord. Everything actually begins with hearing and everything continues on this basis of hearing. Hearing is very important because simply by giving oral reception, the heart is getting cleansed. Hmm? Krishna personally comes and cleanses the heart of the devotee who has developed attraction to hearing about his glory. How sweet Krishna is. Says, okay, this person is trying to know about me. Let me help. <laughs> so in all schools, colleges, universities at home, what should children learn? They should hear about the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Krishna. Hmm? They should learn to love who? Krishna. They should learn to serve Krishna. They should engage their mind and senses and bodies in serving Krishna. So hearing the words of the Bhagavad Gita, Sarva Dharman Paritya Jamam Ekam Sharanam Raja, Aham Tvam Sarva Pape Bhyo Moksha Shami Masuchaha. Hmm? So sweet. Krishna says in the end, don't worry about all the other things. Just surrender unto me. I will take care of you. I will protect you. Don't hesitate. Don't worry. Don't fear. Hmm? Krishna is so reassuring. Don't worry. I'll take care of all your sinful reactions. Huh? I will put an end to all that. Suffering. <clears throat> so you may say, oh, I've come to Krishna consciousness, but still I'm suffering. Yes, we are suffering, but actually it's only a token. It's only a small percentage of what we would actually suffer if we were not engaged in the process of devotional service, if we had not received Krishna's special mercy in the form of Gurudev. Huh? How blessed we are, how lucky we are, and so fortunate we are. So now that we have received this good fortune, we should try our level best to give in some small way Krishna to others. Remember, when we give Krishna to others, we get more Krishna. The more Krishna we give to others, more we get Krishna. So giving Krishna in the form of holy name, giving Krishna in the form of books, giving Krishna in the form of prasadam, giving Krishna in the form of uh, Krishna conscious activity. You can arrange something at home. Hmm? Do something. So that people come to hear about Krishna. People get attracted to the process of devotional service and start making their life successful. And who knows? Maybe some of them will become pure devotees and they will take us back home, back to Godhead. <laughs> that is the beauty of Krishna consciousness because you never know. Just like Suniti, she told her son, Dhruva, 
about how to attain what he wanted by saying, you have no other way except to go to God. So go and pray to the Supreme Personality of Godhead because only he can fulfill your desire. That's all she said. She gave actually very beautiful instruction. She said, my dear son, don't wish evil for anyone, even though they may harm us. Instead, you take the words of your stepmother seriously and go to that one person who can fulfill your desires. Go and worship the Supreme Lord. And he said, where is the Lord to be found? She said, I've heard from the sages that he's found in the forest. So go there and meditate. And then Narad Muni comes there, tests Dhruva to see how determined he is. And finding him so determined, he gives him the mantra. Om Namo Narayanaya. Om Namo Narayanaya. And Dhruva takes that so seriously that he becomes so deeply absorbed in meditation. He slowly starts giving up eating. Huh? One by one, he starts giving up all forms of sense gratification. He says, no, no, no. I'll eat only fruits. Then after that, no, no, only fallen leaves. Then only a little water. Then finally, he says, I won't even breathe. I don't want to even breathe. <laughs> and he chokes up the entire universe. The demigods are gasping for breath. And they go running to Lord Vishnu and say, do something. <laughs> He's quenching the entire world. And he's taking away the air for everyone. So then Lord Vishnu goes and says, okay, my dear son, what do you want? And then what Dhruva says, I was asking for bits of broken glass, but after seeing you, what more do I want? He became totally purified, hmm? became a pure devotee. So loving and merciful is the Lord that if one sincerely tries, just doing just a little bit at a time, Krishna gives us strength to do a little bit more, little bit more, little bit more. Until one fine day, we are actually strong enough to practice Krishna consciousness. We can start chanting 16 rounds. We can get initiated. We can start, start taking instructions for a more spiritual master and begin our journey back home, back to God. So this has become so simple now. Like I said in the beginning, Lord Chaitanya has made it so easy for everyone Simply by following the simple process of chanting, we can awaken our love for Krishna. We can purify our hearts of lust, anger, greed, illusion, pride, envy, all the dirty, nasty things in the heart. It completely cleansed. And we are no longer subject to the attacks that come by way of these highway robbers. We call them the six highway robbers. They attack you when you least expect it. But slowly we can overcome this tendency to get triggered, to get annoyed, to get irritated, to become very greedy all of a sudden, or become jealous, envious. All these things slowly, slowly, slowly will start peeling away, you know, like layers, they will fall off. And we will no longer be tormented by these things. We'll start becoming more steady in our devotional service. We'll start becoming more fixed in our devotional service. And we'll actually be able to do some service to this great missionary movement of Krishna consciousness. So what does Srila Prabhupada say? One need only chant the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, 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 Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Rama Hare Hare. Everyone engaged in the practice of chanting the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra will be completely cleansed from the core of his heart and be saved from the cycle of birth and death. Isn't that the most wonderful gift ever that you've heard? I just imagine finally getting free of the cycle of birth and death and going back home, back to Krishna, the eternal spiritual world where we actually belong. That is our home. That is where we have fallen away from. And where Krishna is waiting, like a loving father, he is just waiting for all of our spirit souls to come back saying, my dear spirit soul, how long are you going to keep trying to be happy in the material world? You don't belong there. You belong to me. Come back to me. Krishna has only one program, as Guru Maharaj says. Come back to me. <laughs> so here's the process of devotional service that we have been mercifully given by Srila Prabhupada's mercy, by Guru Dev's mercy. Somehow, uh, even though we don't deserve it, even though there is no reason for us, you know, to get this mercy, we have received it. Causeless mercy, undeserving, unworthy, uh, unqualified though we are, we simply have received the mercy of Lord Chaitanya. 
which is the most valuable gift. Brahmanda Brahmiti Kona Bhagyavan Ji, Guru Krishna Prasad, if I Bhakti Lata Beach, hmm? after wandering for millions of lifetimes, up and down through so many planetary systems, through so many species of life, so very fortunate soul meets a bona fide spiritual master and gets the seed of pure devotional service. Arigo! Jai Gurudev! Jai Srila Prabhupada! So we are so fortunate. So let us ourselves take the words of the Bhagavad Gita seriously, practice the words of the Bhagavad Gita, and try in our own small, little, humble way to uh, give this wonderful gift. We may not be very proficient, we may not have so much knowledge, we may not know so much Shastra or so many Shlokas, doesn't matter. Whatever little bit we know, we must try and share with others to spread this Krishna consciousness movement and to make others fortunate. So thank you all. <laughs> you have listened very patiently. We can now open up for questions, comments, realizations. Hare Krishna. Thank you all very much. Hare Krishna. So uh, uh, it, it looks like nobody was able to host the call. So what we are going to do is just do the hosting ourselves. <laughs> so whoever wants to, I will stop share now and that way I can see you all. Feel free to put on your camera if you would like to do that and that way I can see you and if you have any questions any comments any corrections or you want to share some realizations please feel free to do that oh I see thank you, Shri Devi. thank you Sri Devi for the address Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Well, my God, Sister Tipiki. Thank you very much. Hare Krishna. Thank you very Thank much. You. Thank you. So I will write tomorrow. Then I will be Hare happy. Krishna. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you for joining us and giving us your valuable association. Such a sincere devotee. Thank you, Sita Kirti. You just being here makes us all so happy. I'm happy when I see you and all the others as well. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Okay, I see Namrata's hand is up. Please go ahead, Namrata ji. Hare Krishna. Please accept my humble obeisances. Uh, Mataji, uh, I wanted to ask, uh, when you mentioned about uh, children, so many of the children, yes, in our moment have natural inclination. And since they have association right from the childhood, they do develop uh, very nicely. But we also have some children who doesn't have natural inclination. So uh, what, what can we do for those kind of children? Simply being in the association of other children who are Krishna conscious, even those who are not so inclined become enthusiastic. They may not like really, you know, to join in and all. But when they see other kids joining in for Kirtan, they also join in for Kirtan. When they see other kids making up a play, chalo, chalo, let's make a play, let's do a drama for Krishna, let's make some popcorn for Krishna, let's go on a picnic and have fun and talk about Krishna, then they join in. So the best thing you can do for those who are reluctant is to mix them up with those children who are enthusiastically doing something for Krishna because children tend to like to do things in groups with other kids. So they can easily get absorbed in kirtan, in dance, in drama, in plays, in skits, in uh, festival programs, in uh, bhajans, you know, playing harmonium, doing something for Krishna with that. Thank you, Mataji. I think uh, I would like to share one thing, uh, one incident, which is uh, which made me thought so. Uh, so it is uh, back uh, before two years. Uh, I was uh, I was working in the Surat Temple. I was I was serving there, and uh, I joined a program for uh, the girls who were. Uh, the program was for the teenage girls, basically. 
uh, from the age of 13 to 25. So um, uh, there I, I saw many girls who were the children of congregation itself, but they hardly had the interest to um, explore the program we have offered to them. So I was just wondering how, I mean, they are grown up children, like 13 to 25 years of age are grown up girls. So they were, uh, whenever we, I mean, as much as we try to uh, preach them and uh, tell them the glories of this movement, they come with a lot of reasons that, uh, you know, <laughs> they're not able to prioritize this thing so uh, i don't know how could we reach the teens of uh, this time mm. yeah teens are a picky bunch of people you know they need something really attractive really you know vibrant really absorbing really fun they're a very special group of people you can't just dish out the same old same old and expect them to swallow it so they need very special handling they need people who are very good in dealing with youth, to deal with them, engaging them in some project where they can take initiative, they can own some part of the project and giving them that freedom to develop it and to do it is the key to engaging our youth. The youth, uh, you know, they want to try out their things. They don't like to really be told what to do, basically. They want to do things themselves and they actually like doing things themselves. So giving them a project, okay, you organize the Sunday festival or you go out and you plant some uh, banana trees and you uh, do all the soil digging and the seed planting and the harvest. I mean, everything from A to Z. Giving them something active where they can use their mind, bodies, energy and uh, have something to show for it. That makes gives them a sense of ownership, accomplishment, increases their self-confidence and success breeds success. So once they're successful at something, they're eager to try again to do something. It also increases the bonding and keeps them together. So teenagers need very special handling. They, they need very expert team leader. They need a person who knows the psyche of youth and knows how to deal with their quirks and their sassiness and their uh you know how sometimes some youth can be some are very shy some are overly participatory and hog the limelight i mean there are all different varieties of children obviously so just as an expert football coach knows how to bring out the best in every player you need someone who's really good with the youth to engage them nicely most of our youth are bored out of their minds it's such a waste you know because we are not offering them something absorbing, something vibrant, something, you know, that they can delight in and do well. Actually, if you tap them, they have so many creative talents and they have so many wonderful ideas. But uh, I don't know, maybe it's a little bit unfortunate thing that sometimes, you know, as adults in the temple, we try to hog all the, you know, services ourselves and we don't like to let go. And you don't like to give up services. We like to get other people to do what we want them to do. That kind of mentality won't work with the teenagers, you know. They need space to grow their wings and to learn and do things on their own. Uh, yes, Mataji, I think. Thank you. Uh, that was a wonderful uh, suggestion, what you gave. Uh, I think that is where uh, I, I saw that time that uh, the congregation females who were leading, they really were like uh, going in a ritualistic way. So uh, the, the youth really uh, wants their freedom. So yes, thank you for that. Hare Krishna. Thank you, very nice question. We have Scarlett who has raised a hand. Go ahead, Scarlett Mataji. And no problem, you don't have to put on your camera. We quite understand. Thank you. Hi, Krishna, and thank you for a wonderful class. Um, I'm a mother of six children myself, and I, I know all about the 
how to uh, I, I even studied uh, in uh, in uh, uh, children's subjects so but there are things I have also uh, experienced uh, with other family children uh, with other family the often is uh, it has been I, I have experienced often is very 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 thin line between can you speak up a little bit Scarlett your voice is very low for me to hear okay uh, maybe I'll take it further here do you hear me you hear me yeah, now? I can hear you but the volume is still pretty low okay uh, I don't know if I can I have the highest volume on my uh, computer so I don't know what is it okay go ahead there is uh, a, in my experience there is a very very fine line between to uh, teach the children to make them do things uh, uh, already when they are a small child uh, so that they are going to be learned and do it later on but I have also learned that these children often go back to to not to do the, th the things they have learned when they were a child you understand what I mean do you hear me yeah Yes, and uh, I know even there, there are family who have been very, very, very religious and spiritual, uh, and they have made their children to do everything in a spiritual way, in a religious way. But then when they grow up to be a, a adult, they resent it, they didn't want it, they didn't want to do it. And, that's my that make me wonder do these have to do with karma that actually they were not born to do those things but they was born to do other things or to pay karma for instance to other things beside that uh, which the uh, the parents tried and uh, forced them to learn you understand what i mean i don't know if i say my question clearly enough yeah, I'll give you a, 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 a example of the Amish. You know, the exactly. Amish are a very, very, very conservative community. Exactly. And they raise their children in a very uh, specific way. They don't like electricity. They don't like outside influence. They have a very specific lifestyle. And so they train their children that way all the way till they're 18. At 18, they tell them, now you go out into the world and you choose. Do you want to follow the Amish lifestyle or do you want to follow what the others are doing? So they let them lose. And guess what? 99% of those children come back because they realize what is there in the outside world is not good for them. So almost this is what His Holiness Bhakti Tita Maharaj said that once you raise the child nicely and they see the value of the strength of community, the, the Amish are very, very community minded. That means they really care for each other. They really help each other out. They are there for each other, very strong community. You won't get that in the outside world, but they release the young and they say, okay, you go out, you see what is there in the world. And if you choose to come back, you're welcome. But if you choose to go out and do that stuff, that's your life. No, but 99% uh, uh, of the kids come back because they see the value of being in that particular community. But so, no, ultimately, children I'm have to make a choice. We can only give them our best. And after that, it is their karma, it is their own inclination, it is the association they keep. That's also very important. That makes them, you know, choose one way or the other. But it's uh, uh, Amish is one of them, yes. But for instance, in Islamic family, they don't let they don't let their children go freely and choose freely. But it's uh, a positive, opposite. They they do everything they can to keep their children in their class uh, and uh, make them to get married uh, soon soon after when they are uh, even younger than uh, eighteen or seventeen and so on. So uh, and when when they got uh, when they get uh, adults or older. 
they they always resent their life that what they, they have been through their their family their fa uh, their um, parents because of what they have been through because of that they were first forced to learn things that they didn't want uh, do uh, practice that they, the things that they didn't want and so on and so on. you understand what i mean so maybe it's still if if as a parents for for instance my daughter have now a son and I, I believe that it's good to to watch over your child and see that uh, the child doesn't do anything wrong, but to force them to learn something that the child doesn't want to learn, that would be dangerous, right? Why force anything on anyone? Does Krishna force anything on anyone? Krishna says, no, whatever you do with love, that only I will accept. So why should we force anything on anyone, even if it's a child, why should we force? We, we must set a good example ourselves, we can encourage them, we can make the, uh, the, the atmosphere conducive, we can encourage them, but why we should force any child for anything? It will just cause distress and then later on they will rebel against that. Okay, thank you. Welcome. Hare Krishna Mataji, please accept my humble obeisances. Allah is to Shri Prabhupada. All glory is to Guru Maharaj. Um, thank you so mine. much. All glory is to Shri Prabhupada. All glory is to Guru Dev. Sorry, Mataji, I'm not able to switch on my camera. Um, so, um, thank you so much, Mataji, for your class. And um, um, you, you rightly mentioned that um, um, we have to take it seriously, this human life. And... Um, we have to go back to Godhead because uh, um, we have been suffering all these lifetimes. So, Mataji, I have a question like, uh, sir, suppose uh, we have all the previous uh, karmas and we previous impressions on our mind in our subtle body. We carry them from lifetime to lifetime. But suppose um, we have unfulfilled desires in this life and still we want to go back to Godhead. So how to how to prioritize? Like, so do we have to fulfill those unfulfilled uh, desires and then become free, or we have to ignore them and uh, try to purify or think that Krishna will purify someday? Um, uh, so how to take Mataji? Suppose if we try to fulfill those desires, we may end up feeling guilty. Um, so like for doing those things. So I was I was confused about that, Mataji. Yes, yes, it's a very important question and a very deep question which you have raised because we all have different, different anarthas, different, different material desires, attachments which keep us involved with the material energy and that is why we must take the guidance of the spiritual master for whatever we are trying to do because the spiritual master can see, you know, we might pretend, oh, I want this car for devotional service, but actually we want it for ourselves. <laughs> I want this house, I want this uh, and promotion, I want this, I will use it in Krishna's service. That's what we think. But actually it is a subtle desire to enjoy that particular material energy manifesting as, oh, it is Yukta Vairagya, it is this, it is that. So therefore, we must be extremely careful and take the guidance of the spiritual master for every major decision in life so that we are not going down the wrong road. Because remember, one material desire will lead to another, will lead to another. And before we know it, a senses will carry us off. You know, as the Bhagavad Gita says, as even as a boat is swept away on the water, even one of the roaming senses, if they're uncontrolled, will sweep away even a man of intelligence. So therefore, spiritual life raises edge. We have to guard our spiritual life like it is the Kohinoor gem. We cannot afford to be lax, complacent, half-hearted, distracted, lazy, procrastinating, because then Maya catches you very fast. She knows our weaknesses very well and she traps you immediately. So our uh, material desires may be there, but I've heard Guru Maharaj say, as long as you don't act on it, 
Hmm? And you continue with your devotional service. Krishna will purify you or he will award that material desire if he sees that that is going to satisfy the devotee and not making you hanker more. But if he thinks, if he knows that that is going to entangle you further, he will not give you that. He will not give you that. So Krishna knows what is best for his devotee and he will give exactly what we need at that point to make progress, to surrender more. He will give us difficulties also. He will yes, give us difficulties true. also to test us. Mm. Yeah, that's true. Sometimes, um, um, sometimes unfulfilled dreams, uh, sorry, unfulfilled desires come into dreams, Mataji. <laughs> sometimes yes. we experience like that. So yeah. when uh, morning I wake up and I'll think about it for some time later, I leave it. But um, so <laughs> uh, those things happen sometimes. So I I will be confused. Like, do we read? So when it comes into dream, means I feel that it's the strong desire, which already is there in my mind. Um, so mind is tricking me, or I have to fulfill that, or what should I do? <laughs> I was thinking. Um, most of the times, it's best to ignore it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's what I understand. Neglect <laughs> like the mind because if you give the mind the upper hand, finish. You know, yeah. you can't allow the mind to become the master. We have to keep the mind under control. Yeah, Guru Maharaj said a uh, lot many times, like don't listen to your mind. Yeah, right, <clears throat> right. Mind will present so many things. You know, <laughs> I'm struggling with that myself. <laughs> I'm trying to understand how to navigate. You know, the situation I have over here and I'm realizing this is another test of Maya, you know. Yeah. Thank you, Mataji. Thank you so much. Very nice question. Very nice question. Okay, if there are no more questions, no more comments, no more sharing of realizations. Uh, with your kind permission, shall I end the call? Yes, Mataji. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mataji. Thank you. And say Hare Krishna to Ruhan. I saw he was running up and down. I was waving to him. <laughs> Hare Krishna, Ruhan. So nice to see you. Hare Bol. How are you doing? I remember one fun we had together in Bhaktivedanta Hospital where you singing Nashinga Day prayer. <laughs> He's planning new things in Krishna consciousness and he's eager to show his plannings to Guru Maharaj. So he's planning everything. And when Guru Maharaj will come, he will show him all his projects. Very nice. Mother, artist, son. Okay, thank you all so very much. Thank I you very much. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Thank you.